This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Eckley Miners Village is offering free admission on Saturday. We'll tell you about that and more next. Greetings one and all and welcome to a new day of local information. I'm Ken Carr and I thank you for joining us. There's a lot going on at Eckley Miners Village this Saturday and you can be a part of it all for free. Here's Lisa Sugar with today's news feature. This Saturday, you're invited to the Eckley Miners Village to check out all the great things that are there, to take a tour and so much more. And guess what? Admission is free. It is all part of Free Admission Day. Explore Eckley Miners Village and Pennsylvania Trails of History Sites and Museums. Here to tell us all about it today is Chris Stokem. Chris is a project manager for the Eckley Miners Village. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. This sounds like a great day. People get to come take advantage and it's free of charge. You know, Eckley is one of several historical sites managed by the Pennsylvania Historical Museum Commission that will be offering uh, free admission from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on uh, this Saturday, September 24th. Um, we have a bunch of different activities planned for the day. Um, and so, as always, visitors are able to tour through our museum uh, and to walk or drive uh, the length of the village. We preserve more than 200 structures, and that's everything from miners' homes to churches to mine operators' mansions, uh, and then any number of outbuildings, you know, outhouses, cow sheds, garages, things that really give you, um, you know, a comprehensive window into the lives lives of anthracite mining families. Absolutely. So now when this event happens on Saturday, uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be showing up. I'm sure you're glad that people are coming back because COVID took a toll on Eckley. It took a toll on Eckley as it took a toll on uh, so many of our public institutions. Uh, and the real tragedy at a, a spot like Eckley is that this is a place where people, you know, really develop a personal connection, um, right? Whether they have uh, family members who are involved in the anthracite industry or they're trying to understand, you know, the origins of our regional culture. Um, Eckley can tell that story in a way that not many other heritage sites can. And so, you know, it's, it's great to see people back here walking the streets, reminiscing, you know, having memories of their fathers or grandfathers called up as they they see this historic landscape that we're able to provide. Now, also on Saturday, you told me there's going to be an author there. So this is exciting as well. So Mitch Troutman is a he's an organizer, uh, an activist, grew up in northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, and he recently released a book called The Bootleg Coal Rebellion. And so Mitch is looking at uh, this sort of untold history of survival strategies that people in the anthracite region came up with during the Great Depression. Um, you know, as with so many other companies, coal mining operations here in northeastern Pennsylvania laid off thousands of workers during the Great Depression. Uh, and Mitch has the story of how those communities came together, um, organized themselves to uh, secretly and illegally mine coal on company-owned lands. They processed that coal themselves, got it to market themselves. I mean, the, the scale of the industry that he describes is really remarkable. Um, in the course of the 1930s, they mined something like two and a half million tons of coal. Uh, and these are small operations, you know, three, four, or five workers. They're operating under cover of night. Um, they're hounded by coal and iron police. And so what they were able to accomplish and the way they were able to, um, you know, support themselves and their families through this economic crisis is, is really amazing. And there's, you know, it's an inspiring book um, and frequently one that has, you know, lessons for today about what communities can pull together with scant resources, uh, you know, when they when they have to. That's nice. So when people come over, they get a special treat as well. They get to see the author and purchase his book if they would like to do so as well. And you tell me they're going to be also doing some flower bulb planting so people could help with that if they want to. That's right. So 10 in the morning, we'll have some of our volunteers here. Uh, they'll be planting flower bulbs around our slate pickers house, which represents uh, the living conditions of some of the um, you know, most recently arrived uh, laborers in Eckley. And so, you know, if you want to come out and help beautify the property, there's no prior gardening experience required. We'd love to have your help. And you do need help all year round. You need volunteers because that's one thing that COVID did impact the volunteers that were coming to Eckley. That's absolutely right. You know, without the volunteers, the site, um, you know, can't offer the programs that we want to offer. We can't offer tours with the frequency that we want to offer them. And so, 
Um, you know, there's a lot of ways you can get involved. You don't have to be an expert on the history of the anthracite region. You don't have to have any, you know, prior educational experience, anything like that. But if you care about a local institution and you want to support our mission, you know, our our efforts to document how regional culture has changed and developed over time, the, the hard work and sacrifice of anthracite mining families. Um, certainly, you know, check out our website, give us a call. Uh, we can explain in greater detail all the ways you can get involved. Um, we would just love to have you here. All righty. So the best phone number for them to call to get in touch? Uh, it's 570-636-2070. All right. Very good. So a lot happening always at Eckley. A lot of volunteers needed to help continue the wonderful tradition of this great historic site in our area. And everyone come out this Saturday from 10 till 5, free admission, a lot happening and a lot to see. Thanks so much, Chris. Hope to talk with you again soon. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Today's news feature is brought to you by Falvello Law Firm. Have you been injured in a car accident? Call Falvello Law Firm. Your case is our fight. Time now for weather on SSP TV News. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service on Thursday. Showers likely and possibly a thunderstorm before noon, then a chance of showers. It'll be partly sunny with a high near 63 degrees. Winds could gust as high as 23 miles per hour. We have a 70% chance of precipitation. New precipitation amounts between a quarter and half of an inch possible. On Thursday night, partly cloudy with a low around 43 degrees. Wind gusts as high as 25 miles per hour. Friday, mostly sunny with a high near 57 degrees. Wind gusts as high as 32 miles per hour. Friday night, mostly clear with a low around 40 degrees. Saturday mostly sunny with a high near 64 degrees. Saturday night partly cloudy with a low around 47 degrees. Sunday a 30% chance of showers after 2 p.m. partly sunny with a high near 70 degrees. And Sunday night a 30% chance of showers before 2 a.m. mostly cloudy with a low around 53 degrees. Here's today's SSP TV standard speaker scoreboard. In girls golf, Hazelton area topped North Pocono in a close match at the Sugarloaf Golf Club. Ella Oswald led the Lady Cougars with a 45, while Gia Rainey had a 53. In volleyball, Hazelton beat Hanover area. Lindsay Barron had 21 service points and nine aces. Lindsay Buglio also had nine aces and she had 13 service points. Marion beat Minersville with Jenna Goff hitting 10 aces. MMI lost to Wyoming area. Emily Borchick had 12 service points for the Lady Preppers. Brianna Kennedy had 16 saves for Hazelton area in their loss to Crestwood in girls soccer. We'll be right back with our community and sports features plus our Adopt Me segment from the Hazelton Animal Shelter. The next Greater Hazelton Chamber of Commerce Women's Networking Luncheon is on Tuesday, September 27th from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. at the Valley Country Club in Sugarloaf. The guest speaker is Dr. Lori Alphonse, Lehigh Valley Health Network Deputy Physician-in-Chief Cancer Institute Surgical Oncology. To register, go to hazeltonchamber.org and click on Events and News. The Pennsylvania State Police are hosting a free child safety seat inspection on Thursday, September 22nd from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the State Police Barracks in West Hazelton. SSP TV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of the following. David R. Manick, 85. Mass is Friday at 9.30 a.m. at St. Jude's Church in Mountaintop. Friends and family may call Thursday from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the De Sidurio Layman Funeral Home in Mountaintop. Barbara M. Mitchell, 86, of Hazleton. The service is Friday at 10 a.m. at St. Mary's Byzantine Catholic Church in Hazleton. Friends and family may call Thursday from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home in Hazleton. And John L. Maggio, who passed away on August 30th. The Obituary Report is brought to you by Moran Funeral Home, third generation family owned funeral home serving all faiths since 1939. Located at 229 West 12th Street in Hazleton, call 570 454 8341 and go to moranfuneralhome.com. <laughs> 